Hey guys, James here from eBass Guitar, and in today's bass guitar lesson, I'm gonna show you how to play five easy arpeggios for beginner bass guitar players. If this sounds good, make sure you check out this lesson all the way to the end. Hey guys, it's James here from E Bass Guitar and we specialize in helping beginner to intermediate bass guitar players and every week we release a lesson just like this one on YouTube. So if you enjoy it, make sure you hit the red subscribe button so you can be the first to know when these are released. So last week we released a lesson called Five Easy Scales for Beginner Bass Guitar Players and off the back of that I've had a ton of questions asking me what are the five easy arpeggios for beginner bass guitar players. So today I'm gonna to share those and I'm also gonna show you what they sound like in context. So first of all, let's give you a taster of what we're gonna be covering today. So guys, just before we hit the lesson content, I want you to know there's a completely free PDF which comes with this lesson where you can see everything we're discussing today written out in standard notation and tab. There's a link in the description below. Also, if you wanna grab the backing tracks that we're using today, you can get these in the backing track vault which is part of the Bass Lab Plus membership over at eBass Guitar. There's a link in the description below where you can join free with a 14 day trial. So first of all, it's worth explaining what actually is an arpeggio. An arpeggio in its literal definition is a broken chord. We, in certain circumstances, can play chords on the bass guitar just like this. But that's quite unusual. Normally playing chords is the realm of the key piano player or the guitarist. So what we tend to do as bass players is outline the harmony or the sound of the chord in our bass line. And an arpeggio is a great place to start. So let's talk very briefly about the chord, which I just played a second ago. This is a C major chord, and this comes directly from a C major scale. And a C major chord is constructed of the root, the third and the fifth notes of the scale. But what we can do is we can break these up one by one for our bass line. So we can play a C, an E and a G. And what we end up is with a device called a C triad. But we can take this one step further and make it into what I call a one octave arpeggio by adding the octave on the end. So what we do is we have a C, an E, a G, and then a higher C like this. And if we play those four notes in our bass line, we are perfectly outlining the harmony of a C major chord. These four notes are the building blocks of that chord. So it's really important to understand how they work. And if you use them in your bass lines, they create really, really strong harmonic bass lines. So the next thing I would do with that is add in another important note, and that is the major seven, because this is another foundational note. So that would be a C, an E, a G, and then a B up top like that to the octave. And so you could practice this. So if you see a C major chord written, those four notes will work absolutely brilliant here and will create really strong bass lines. So let me demonstrate what a C major arpeggio and a C major seven arpeggio sounds like in context. <laughs> Thank you. 
So the next arpeggio we need to understand how to construct is the minor arpeggio. And this is what the minor chord sounds like. It has a sad kind of melancholy sound to it. So the notes of the minor chord are a C, E flat and G. And these comes from the minor scale. So the minor arpeggio is gonna be a C, an E flat, a G, so that's the triad, which is the first three notes, and we can make it into the one octave arpeggio by adding the octave on the end like this. So C, E flat, G, C. Obviously, as you get comfortable with these arpeggios, I suggest learning them in two, even three octaves all over the neck. So that is the first stage, is just simply learning the minor arpeggio. But we can also make this into a minor seven arpeggio, which will help us create really, really strong bass lines. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add in the flattened seventh. So if we play the minor scale, make sure you check out the previous video I made on this. So the minor scale is C, D, E flat, F, G, a flat and then we add in the B flat like that so we end up with the root flattened third the fifth and the flattened seventh like that so C E flat G B flat and then the octave once you're comfortable with it in one octave take those four or five notes and extend them across the whole of the neck because all of those notes are part of a C minor seven arpeggio. So let's hear what the C minor seven arpeggio and the C minor of course sounds like in context. <laughs> So, so far we've covered the major arpeggio, which works over a major chord and sounds like this. And we've also covered the minor arpeggio, which works over the minor chord. Now there's one more very important arpeggio or chord that we need to talk about. And once we've learned this, we've learned the three most important chords of arpeggios, which in reality will probably cover 70 to 80% of pop and rock music straight out the gate. So this arpeggio is what's called the dominant seventh. You might hear it called a C seven chord, or you might hear it called a C dominant seventh chord. They're pretty much the same thing. So they sound like this. This is what the chord sounds like. So the arpeggio is very straightforward. So it's the straight C major triad with a flattened seventh added like that. So it's root, third, fifth, flattened seventh, octave like that to create the one octave version of that arpeggio. So the notes are a C, an E, a G, a B flat, and an octave C like that. Obviously learn it across the whole of the neck. So let's find out what the dominant chord sounds like in context. You'll hear this sound in a lot of funk music. So it's a really important sound to start understanding if you like that kind of music. <laughs> So those are the three most important arpeggios you need to know, and we'll come on to the other two in just a second. But you, what you'll notice me doing is extending these out across the whole of the neck, because that's where the possibilities really start to open up. So if you're enjoying this lesson and you want to learn about how to apply music theory to the bass guitar in a really practical, real world way, make sure you jump over to ebassguitar.com and check out the Bass Lab Plus. The Bass Lab Plus is a full step-by-step -step membership program for the beginning 
beginner to intermediate bass guitar player, which gives you all of the tools and the courses you need to learn to play at a jam session, to rock out in a covers band, to join the worship team, or simply just have a huge ton of fun playing the bass guitar at home. There is a link in the description below where you can join free today with a 14 day trial. So arpeggio number four is a C minor seven flat five chord. You may also hear it called a half diminished two. They are exactly the same thing. So first of all, let's have a listen to what the chord sounds like. And now we build the arpeggio out. So it is a C minor seven flat five. We've already learned most of this when we looked at the minor seven arpeggio. So let's use that as our starting point. So that is a C an E flat, a G and a B flat and then the octave there. And so it's the root, the third and the fifth. And all we do to get the flattened fifth is take the fifth note down by half a step. So this is our root, our flattened third and our fifth. And we just move it down by half a step like this. So we end up with that. So the notes of the minor seven flat five um, arpeggio are a C, E flat, a G flat, and a B flat and a C. So how is this arpeggio used? The minor seven flat five arpeggio is used a lot in jazz music, but it is used in more kind of advanced pop music too. So if you end up playing songs by artists such as Elton John or Billy Joel, uh, where the harmony is a little bit more kind of advanced, I guess, you will see this chord. So it's really important to understand how it's constructed. But let's hear what the C minor seven flat five arpeggio sounds like in context. And obviously I'm gonna start building it out across the whole of the neck because this is where the possibilities open up. So the last arpeggio we're going to look at today is what's called a C diminished or C diminished seventh arpeggio. And if you play blues music, this is a really important one to understand and can create some really, really cool bass lines and fills. So first of all, let's hear what the chord sounds like. And now let's construct it. Where I would start is with a half diminished arpeggio, which we learned earlier in this lesson, which is the C, the E flat, the G flat, and the B flat like that. And all we do is we take the B flat and take it down a half a step to an A like that. So we end up with these notes, a C, an E flat, a G flat and an A. The technical name for that last note is actually a B double flat. And then we hit the octave at the end like that. So this chord is, or arpeggio is absolutely fascinating because it creates some really interesting shapes on the neck. So I'm gonna show you how I would finger this now. So what I would do is I would put my first finger on there, play the C and the E flat. And then I would take my first finger and put it on the G flat. And then what you find is the A will fall perfectly under the fourth finger like that, and then up to the C like that. So I'm gently sort of crabbing from one position to the next. So we end up with this. And what you'll discover when you look more deeply into this arpeggio, every note is a minor third or three frets apart. And this creates a fascinating pattern which you can extend across the whole of the fingerboard. Let me demonstrate if I move it up down this area of the neck, we end up with this but we can just carry on with that shape. And so you end up with these really cool diminished runs which just fall right under the hand. Like that, and we can come back again. So one of my favorite things to play on the bass guitar is those particular patterns. Now back to blues music. I'm sure you may have heard this run. Something 
something like that anyway. There is a diminished chord nestling in it there and that is on the B note like that. So if we go from the F to the A and then we hit the B flat, we can bridge those two chords together. So if it would be chord four to chord five, we can use this note in the middle B and that would be a B diminished chord and what we can do is we can start putting bass runs in there based on the B diminished arpeggio which sound really good so you might hear stuff like this something along those sorts of lines so next time you're playing a blues track look out for that B diminished and see if you can get this arpeggio in there so let's hear what the diminished chord sounds like in context Guys, that's the end of today's bass guitar lesson. If you've enjoyed this lesson, make sure you download the free PDF cheat sheet so you can see all of the arpeggios we've discussed today written out. There is a link in the description below. Also, if you're looking to push your bass playing forward, make sure you subscribe to this channel so you can be the first to know when new lessons are released every week. Cheers, I've been James from eBassGuitar.com and I'll catch you next time.